New vehicles like this are just amazing when they're brand new. With higher levels of performance, efficiency, as well as technology, it ensures that your driving experience is going to be top shelf. Now, the flip side to that is there's three major elements that can cost you dearly when those parts start to fail. Engine, transmission, as well as the electrics that drive all of the technology. The last thing you and I want is to get stuck with a vehicle that has all this technology and performance and it starts to fail and costs you a third mortgage. Well, guess what? I'm going to help you guys. Today, we're going to talk about engines and I'm going to share a list of five junk engines and the vehicles you'll find them in so you too can avoid them and stay away from costly mistakes. Let's get into it now. Life's too short to drive boring cars. Now the first junky engine that I recommend staying away from is buried under the hood of this little unit right here. Now what we have here is a BMW Mini and everybody knows that they're strongly affiliated with BMW. But let's take a quick look around at the car and first understand why people even try to buy these things in the first place. They have gorgeous little wheels and cool little retro handles, oversized glass on the roof, as well as wonderful plastic around the wheel wells, great little front grille, and of course the bug-eyed little headlights. Then you go down here and you have other great accents. How about those retro looking mirrors? And then around the back, what we're looking at is a Cooper, and of course by BMW. This one has a single tailpipe, but look at all the carbon buried in there. And the interior is kind of fun too, that's why people buy these. Very retro, you can get manual, automatic, and it's got some great styling accents. There's some higher quality components because this is based on a BMW, so people feel good driving these, and they are kind of fun to drive. And the worst part is, at least one in 40 of these is guaranteed to have a major engine catastrophe. It's a known issue, and it's a very pricey one too. Now, many of the problems were teething issues, and a lot of the earlier generation cars had a lot more issues. The 2007 to 2014 model years had a problem called oil starvation. They weren't getting enough adequate oiling to some of the upper engine components, resulting in early cam lobe wear, as well as other internal engine parts. Other issues were they developed some kind of a shake because engine mounts, you could have coolant leaks from all kinds of different cooling hoses. Again, it's BMW. Water pump issues in there. In the 2007 to 2014, you could get oil starvation, where any adequate oiling was made to the internal engine compartments resulting in premature cam lobe wear as well as piston rings you have lots of issues there and engines just wearing it way too soon shaking of motor mounts because they got a little loose and old and aged before their time leaks from both oil and antifreeze because we have essentially a bmw drivetrain and that's what they do coolant leaks from hoses pipes thermostat as well as the electric water pump you could also expect variable valve timing issues with some of these cars where you'd start getting poor running conditions the car would be lurchy off the start it wouldn't have the pickup and get up and go or it wouldn't advance enough and give you the breathing capacity to give you the higher end output you generally would know if your variable valve timing was failing you also had electric system issues whether it was engine related or just general electric that could cause the car to either stall die or just not function at all entirely Smoke was another potential issue with some of the cars if they prematurely wore out and the engine was dying. These also had other issues like related to transmission, but we won't talk about that today. The other big issue with the engine, why these vehicles generally won't last, is between 2005 and 2016, you had the timing chain issues. Timing chain stretch, if they jumped a cog, you'd have piston and valve connection, and of course, boom! The engine was actually shot at that point, dead in the water. That is what BMW struggled with a lot of their engines. This one's no different. The N20, the N47, as well as the N63 were other examples of BMW drivetrains that struggle with issues related to timing chains. Now, where there's going to be a lot of stories of people making 200,000 miles with their cars, generally that's a very difficult target to make, especially if you're talking about the early generation BMW Minis. As a matter of fact, 100,000 miles is more likely a target on the early cars if you can make it count yourself lucky so it's difficult to find a great alternative to the car like this because it's retro fun quirky and it's very unique by its very styling but if you really just want to forego all the engine issues related to these minis if i can suggest go with a good old-fashioned honda civic similar price point 10 times the reliability now the next junk engine is the Eagle Hemi 8, as you find here in the Chrysler 300, parked right behind me here. Now a lot of people love these cars, they're great. Well, are they? Really, these are nothing more or less than the rental special. Or those gray-haired dudes cruising around in Palm Springs. Or maybe those bleached-haired hot tub salesmen like to drive around in these as well. But let's talk about these. If I were to sit my five-year-old kid down to actually draw a picture of a car, they'd probably draw something that looks similar to this. It looks very generic, boxy, square, lacking in style and elegance. The only thing they did here was add this impressive little grill. Like you see right here, that is certainly unique. Other than that, there's not much to look at. 
the outside is fairly boxy and not much going on there but the rent of course at the back you have these crazy little tail lights by chrysler yes there's a sunroof you get some of your fun and frivolity and there's some cheesy chrome all the way around but inside you have the tupperware special nothing more nothing less with the quality of plastics and fit and finish they don't even make fisher price get jealous over that but it's not just about that it's about the 5.7 liter v8 engine tucked under that hood called the eagle and it's not great sure while they're not huge bucks to fix and if you constantly pour money in them and you made dozens of trips to your local dealer you could probably stay ahead of some of the engine issues but there are a lot of engine issues which potentially put this thing out of service and would essentially yield a 300 with the 5.7 trash right from the get-go what kind of issues could you get? Well, the exhaust manifold bolts coming off the engine would break or snap off or get loose. They'd rust out. And that was a problem. You start getting that thup, 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 almost like the engine is spitting. That's a sure sign that you've got an exhaust leak. Another issue with the poor design and the poor heating system that they actually installed in these vehicles, there's a propensity to actually overheat. Very common with a lot of these cars get stuck in that Palm Springs desert. Guaranteed, you're going to start to overheat and bubble this thing over. Poorly designed. Check engine lights is another thing you'll find misfires and the roller lifters are problematic as well if you start hearing ticking noises that could be either from that or could be piston slap or could be a variety of different engine failures then there's the multiple displacement technology that these cars incorporate as well where they can switch cylinders on and off everybody knows gm and the 5.3 6.2 liter engines struggle with that reliability when they use that system well the same thing tends to apply with the dodge products like this of course, they tried to incorporate other technology, variable cam timing systems, and that was problematic on a lot of these engines as well. There's just too much technology buried in this vehicle. It's not well built, not well designed, quite frankly, is a recipe for engine disaster. And literally being probably one in 30 of these is going to see some significant engine failures. This one is clearly one for the dumpster. If your budget can afford it, how about an LS500? Lots of power, V8 engine, and much, much more reliable. And the next engine catastrophe is what's buried under the hood of one of these vehicles. Right there. Or right there. Right there. And there. That one. As well as the Volkswagen CC and many other vehicles that use the EA 888. That's right. It's a popular 2-liter turbo 4-cylinder engine that Volkswagen used through a whole plethora of different cars and little SUVs. Now, while it performs well, you would almost expect a major catastrophic failure in 1 out of 50 vehicles, which is way too many. It's literally Russian roulette or rolling of the dice. But I can still see the allure why people buy Volkswagens. I mean, it's a classic name. It's the Volkswagen, the people's car. Great headlights, great little chin spoilers and vents beautiful wheels of course this one we're looking at the golf r right here as well has a beautiful high gloss piano finish great little detail along the side of course led tail lights are a great feature as well and down below you have a set of quad tailpipes because this is the r now it's a very practical purposeful little car lots of performance lots of efficiency and as well as the interior is very well stapled together. You can get a manual or a DSG transmission and it makes for a very, very fun driving experience. And that pretty much goes for virtually every Volkswagen. They have a feel of solid, like a tank, like a vault. Their materials are nice. And the reference of German engineering always fits in there and of course makes people feel like they're buying something sturdy and well built. Now, generally speaking, I would say that's fairly true and accurate. However, there's lots of problems with this specific engine. You want a few? I mean, it's not hard to trace back some of these issues from 2006 all the way to more or less the present. Misfires, check engine lights, spark plugs, and the coils, of course. Now, that's a lot of maintenance items, but it's still costly when you're talking about coil packs and digging into the German parts bin, similar to the ones that are used by Audi. It means that maintenance on this engine is going to be quite pricey as well. Now, of course, a lot of these German cars nowadays are using similar technology, snap fittings, plastic hoses, and as a result, you're getting coolant leaks. It's very popular with a lot of these vehicles. Oil leaks can be prevalent as well. Thermostat leaks, as well as water pump leaks, is a big issue with a lot of these cars. Now, because this vehicle is direct injected and they're spraying the fuel directly into the cylinder, means the back of the intake valves don't necessarily get a wash like the old conventional engines. And as a result, carbon fouling is very, very common with these vehicles, as I showed you on the tailpipe. Carbon is this car's middle name. Now, a lot of that stuff's replaceable. Some would even argue that a lot of it's maintenance. Now, what's not necessarily maintenance is an unpredicted stretch timing chain that results in a catastrophic failure or an engine that just dies on the spot. 
Now, it doesn't really matter what kind of German car you're talking about. Even a base model like this can still cost you eight to $10,000 for a replacement engine. Step it up into an Audi and you could be dealing with a fifteen dollars to $20,000 repair bill. So engine replacement can be very extensive, expensive, as well as undesirable. Maybe a great alternative is a Mazda CX-5. Guaranteed is going to run almost flawlessly for many, many years to come. And the next one on our list is this little hot rod right behind us here. Now, I know BMW always tends to make the list of some really bad engines, and I haven't spoken about this one for a little bit, but it's very, very true. Now, we're talking about a 1.6 liter or a 2 liter turbo diesel engine. But before we get into the details, let's take a quick look around. What we're looking at here is a 3 Series BMW. I mean, BMWs are always known for their beautiful kidney grills. Of course, they've got that infamous logo, which everybody can't mistake, LED headlights on this particular generation here. Of course, we have a very basic set of wheels but BMW always has great details like the mirrors high quality handles with soft touch sunroof of course LED tail lights and all kinds of trim along the bottom that just makes it look sharp how about the interior BMW interiors always feel well put together they always hold up very well other than a few of the sticky buttons back in the e-series of cars well made well wearing and suited for fairly hard service. BMW is also known for the best interface. For example, their iDrive systems are always better than most, and every manufacturer aspires to do as good as BMW here. Now, unfortunately, BMW struggles in certain other areas, and that's what we're talking about here today. So the engines we're describing here have about a 1 in 42 chance of failing catastrophically, which is way too much for a premium luxury car like you get in a BMW. Some of the generational cars you can find this engine in are the F20, F22, 32, as well as the F10 and E84 vehicles. And that engine that we're talking about is the N47 engine. That's right, the turbo diesel engine. Horrible. How about 2009 to 2013 in that range? Now, as a lot of BMW owners can attest, coolant leaks from water pumps, thermostats, of course, coolant hoses are always a strong possibility, which starts to take a toll on the owner's pocketbook. And it's the pricey technology and electrics that sometimes fail too, like window regulators as well. And there's no beginning or end where you can sustain a failure. And they always cost a thousand plus every time you take the car in for a repair. But it's really not about all of that because a lot of luxury cars have pricey repair and service. However, it's the actual timing chain that drives the timing between the pistons and the valves in this particular engine. What we're talking about is a timing chain stretch. And when that timing chain under load starts to stretch, and it was a known issue, what you can start getting is scraping, rattling, very mechanical noises that just don't sound quite right. A lot of times those noises will be more prevalent in cold weather startups. You'll hear that grrr real quick. Or you can hear it at idle with low oil pressure. When a vehicle's idling and everything's just stable, sometimes you'll hear a bit of rattly noise that does take out of its normal diesel frequency. You would kind of hear an off sound. Every diesel knocks a little bit, but you'll hear a unique sound. And the problem is similar generation the n20 which is the turbo gas jobby in the same vehicle has a very similar problem and we're talking about timing chains that are failing and regardless gas diesel when they fail we're talking about tens of thousands of dollars to replace an engine because that's usually what it means so for those few years between 09 and 13 the turbo diesel and the turbo gas jobby the n47 and the n20 engines are definitely ones to kick to the curb and don't even bother. In today's day and age, there's very little reason to go with the diesel. And if I can offer up, if you really have to have a BMW, go with the modern day B48 engine. That's a turbo four. Seems to be far more reliable than the outgoing N20. It's modular, efficient, and powerful. And the next little hot rod is this unit here, Problematic Beyond. Yes, that's right, 2008 to 2012, 13 in that range. It's four cylinders, yes. It's turbocharged, yes. And boy, does it have failures. As a matter of fact, one in 27 vehicles are known to sustain some level of catastrophic engine failure, which means big dollars out of the pocket for you and I if we happen to own this particular car. It's a sad state of affairs. But first, let's take a quick look and understand why people even buy these and why not just save yourself the hassle. Beautiful LED headlights by Audi. Of course, they've got a basic looking mirror set up, but it does have soft touch to get in front and back. Of course, they have their LED tail lights, which is great set of dual pipes at the bottom and if you look down the side this car has some nice contours to it pardon that little scrunch in the front obviously this thing had a little clip but it does have a sunroof and it has all-wheel drive because it's a quattro system 
and it seems like a sensible car to buy. I mean, all-wheel drive, it's good for all weather around. Of course, you have the luxury amenities. Why wouldn't people buy a car like this? It's because of the engine is why you don't want that car. And the engine specifically is from the VAG group, the Volkswagen Audi group. And you can find similar problems in the Volkswagens that we've previously discovered, but we're talking Audi version. And this is the two liter TFSI engine from 08 to 12. Now there's a series of engine codes from CAEB, CDNC, CNDC. That's right, there's a different engine codes specifically to the problem areas. One being turbo seals. Of course, with some time, the seals start to burn out and you've got turbo problems, but that can happen on any turbo car. PCV and related codes where it doesn't get the proper ventilation and you can cause that to back up and have issues. Intake manifold, you betcha, plastic, big bucks, as well as problematic and tend to leak. Fuel pumps, fuel injectors, very expensive, and yeah, they fail, and frequently. Water pumps, thermostats, and just cool and dropping out of the bottom there on a regular basis. We can't forget, because it's a direct injected engine, we're dealing with carbon buildup, and not only that, you can have oil leaks. For example, on the cam housing, pan gaskets, intake manifolds, this thing can leak, it's a leaker. But it's not all those other little incidentals which can really literally break the bank. It's the real big problem is a heavy oil consumption. And Audi says, hey, you're good for a thousand miles between a quart. But in practice, a lot of people are finding that they're actually going through a quart in about five or 600 miles, which well exceeds factory approved amount. One sign clearly is the low oil light pops up way too frequently between oil changes. You might have to do it a few times. And if we're being honest, some of the contributing factors here are piston rings and the poor fitment of that. And so it allows oil to get by. Too much oil consumption just gets in everything, gums everything up. And then because it's loose and it's already starting to excessively wear because loose pistons, loose rings can start to slap around in the cylinders. And the more slop you get, the more exacerbated wear that you can see as a result of that. As a matter of fact, it can get so bad if you leave it untreated, you can wind up with broken piston rings, broken crowns, scored cylinders, and it might mean major overhaul work. So there's three different stages that the manufacturer might offer up. First one is a reprogram with a new engine case because it's scored and damaged, they may replace that. Stage two could end up costing about $6,000 to replace con rods, piston rings and pistons and a reprogram. But stage three might be a whole new engine and that could literally cost up to fifteen dollars to $20,000 depending which market we're talking about here. It's way beyond the price of and value of what some of these cars are even worth these days. So as you can see, it's clearly not worth it. What I'd suggest is possibly get yourself a newer, latest generation A4 if you have to have an Audi, but if you don't have to have an Audi, maybe go with the Lexus IS with the all-wheel drive. Much better, much more reliable, and you won't deal with any of these headaches. Well, and on that note, of course, right there's a great list of vehicles that will last way over 300,000 miles. I'm sure you'll appreciate it. Check it out. Hope to see you guys on the next one. Catch you real soon. Bye-bye.